In this video, you'll learn how to use the Query Designer to create a select query from the ground up. You'll select the data source along with fields from that data source. As needed, you'll add criteria to filter the results, making sure your data types match. Then you'll run the query and adjust the view of query results to show what you want to see. Our query will answer this question. How many orders did Tailspin Toys place last month? Let's get started. On the ribbon, select Create, then Query Design. This starts the Query Designer. You can use the Show Table dialog box to add tables or queries as a data source, or you can just drag a source over from the navigation pane. Let's use the Orders table for our data source. To answer our question, we specifically need customer names and order dates. You can double-click to add a field to the design grid down here, or you can drag it. If you run the query now, you can see it returns every order for every customer, and you can use the filtering tool here to narrow the results. But if you add criteria to a query, you can get the same result every time. The thing is, adding criteria gets a little more complicated, so keep in mind a couple of rules. The first rule is, know your data. To show you what this means, let's open the orders table. Select fields on the ribbon, and then select the fields in your query. The order date field is a date time data type field. But the customers field isn't a text field, it's a number data type field. This leads to the second rule. Your criteria must match the data type of the field you're filtering. For instance, you can only enter date values in a date time field, numbers in a number field, and so on. So, how do we know which number corresponds to Tailspin Toys? Let's select Database Tools relationships. In the relationships pane, we see customers in orders are related by the ID and customer ID fields. When we open the customers table and locate Tailspin Toys, we see it has an ID value of 23. Back in the query now, let's enter 23 in the criteria row of the customer ID field. Then we expand the order date field and add a pair of logical operators, between and and. We enter a starting date here and an ending date here. Notice that we surround the date values with pound signs. Access requires these when we want to identify the values as a date and not text. Run the query, and now we get the results we were looking for just the orders placed by Tailspin last month. Now let's go back and look at the query designer for a minute. Do you see these checkboxes? If you clear them, you hide your field from the result, like so. The field is still in the query, you just don't see it in the results. Also, if you want to return a portion of the result, such as the top five values or maybe the bottom 25% of a data set, select a value from the return list. Then here in the design grid, go to the sort row and select ascending or descending. Ascending order returns the bottom items and descending returns the top items. Next, look at the totals button. This is a fast way to add sums, averages, or other calculations to a query. Here's an example. You can see we have three tables with a field from each. If I run the query as it is now, we get a lot of repeated categories. So back to Design View. Select Totals. And notice that Access adds a total row to the query grid and sets all three fields to Group By. Suppose we want to see how many items of each category have been ordered. We remove the order date field from the query. We set the quantity field to sum 
and leave the category field on group by. And we move the category field so it's the leftmost field. Now we run the query. It calculates the number of items sold in each category. Sort the results and you can see which categories sell the most or the least. Now you've created a select query by using the Query Designer. You know how to select your data source and criteria, and also how to run and fine-tune your query results.